This is ABC 15 Mornings. As holiday travel picks up, experts are sounding the alarm. The changes going into effect as COVID case numbers continue to surge. Full. They're busting at the seams of patients. Pushed to the limit of Valley Moms, potentially life-saving surgery pushed back what health leaders are doing to help hospitals across the state now as they are reaching capacity. Time to bounce back and clinch that spot in the playoffs. Our ABC 15 sports team shows us what the Cardinals need to get done today to leave Detroit with a win. Yep, we're going to be cheering for them from here. It's a big one. But first, we focus here on the Valley. Light's still up, still dark out there, although the first half of the night, the moon was shining, lighting everything up. It was a full cold moon. <laughs> last night and it was gorgeous. We say good morning to you on this Sunday. I'm Nohe Lonnie Graf. And I'm Mark Thompson. I know hey, I could tell that it's uh, not quite as cold as it was yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. For me, I just want to stay in that hot shower as long as Telling possible. You. And then it's like making that little trip to my robe. It's like <laughs> I got to get out into the cold. Let me hurry up and get. That's yeah. usually the worst part of the day, but uh, stepping outside, I can tell it's just a little bit warm. Yeah, yesterday. just a hair. And it's funny how a degree or two really yeah. makes a difference here in the valley because that really is the difference this morning. So it does feel a little different. It's a little more mild, still chilly. Don't get us wrong, but it's just not that same bite as yesterday. We're going to continue continue to stay dry and sunny this afternoon and we do have a bit of a warm up that's starting today and will stretch into this new work week but then our rain chances are returning in the week ahead as well right now in the Phoenix Metro it is 46 degrees so that is a little more mild and no breezes to speak of so that also makes a difference so if you're going out for that run this morning know that we're going to linger in the 40s for a while but by 10 we're in the 50s and then by two o'clock we cross over into the mid mid 60s and will continue rising from there so that later this afternoon we will top out at 69 degrees so just a little bit warmer than yesterday but every degree will make the difference i'll have a look at that high country forecast because there are changes there as well that's coming up in your full most accurate forecast New this morning, the Loop 101 is back open after it was closed for hours while DPS investigated a deadly crash near Indian School Road. We're told that multiple cars were involved in this, but information is still very limited this morning. We will, of course, pass along any updates as soon as we learn more about any other victims and what led up to that crash. Right now, police are looking for two suspects, and we've got some kind of blurry photos of them, but maybe you'll recognize something, some feature on them. They are accused in an armed robbery at a quick trip near 19th Avenue and Bell. A security camera also got video of them pointing guns at the workers and then stealing cash and lottery tickets. If you think you know who that is, maybe you hear some talk about it out on the streets. You are asked to call silent witness. New data this morning showing the number of Omicron cases are doubling every three days. That's according to the World Health Organization, and it's spreading significantly faster than previous coronavirus variants. The Omicron variant has been detected in 89 countries and four counties right here in Arizona, Pima, Yabakai, Maricopa, and Coconino. And yet still here in Arizona, it is the Delta variant that is pushing our health care systems to its limits. As of Friday, only 5% of beds were available statewide. Arluz Delia Caballero speaking with a Valley mother with the story of a potentially life-saving surgery that is now on hold. Morgan says she's terrified of what tomorrow will bring if she isn't able to get the treatment she needs. They're full. They're busting at the seams of patients. Susan Morgan describing what she saw at Mercy Gilbert Hospital before she was released. It's like nonstop. You turn around and there's one more patient that's being diagnosed with COVID. She says a month ago that was her needing medical attention after getting COVID-19. Because of that, I have several blood clots in my lungs. And so they put me on blood thinners. So all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, I started gushing blood. Which is why she now has rhino rockets in her nose, which are medical devices used to stop chronic nosebleeds. When they take these out, am I going to bleed out? Because no ENT surgeon will cauterize my nose. Though Morgan says hospital staff tried their best to find a surgeon willing to do the potentially life-saving procedure, but... Because of all the hospitals being full because of COVID patients, they were unable to transfer me to a different hospital 
that has an ENT uh, surgeon. So when she was stable enough to be sent home, Morgan was discharged. They need that bed for that other COVID patient. She now finds herself at home with her nine-year-old son, TJ. A lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. I don't want to leave my son. ABC 15 reached out to Dignity Health about their capacity. In a statement, a spokesperson said in part, quote, Dignity Health in Arizona has limited but available capacity. Over the past few weeks, statewide hospitalizations have significantly increased with COVID-19 and non-COVID-19 patients, assuring they're working to improve capacity while ensuring patients get effective medical treatment. And while Morgan says she understands the hospital's hands are tied. Yeah, pray for a Christmas miracle. And I just need someone to help me. And this hospital isn't alone. This week, we've heard of people struggling to get procedures and immediate care at hospitals across the valley. Most are strained and are having to prioritize care. It all comes down to too many patients, not enough beds, and limited staff to treat everyone. Reporting in Phoenix, Lustelia Caballero, ABC 15, Arizona. A major women's basketball matchup in Las Vegas now canceled. The number four ranked Arizona Wildcats, they were supposed to take on number 11 Texas in the Coast to Coast Challenge, but now Arizona is in COVID protocol. Texas's head coach Vic Schaefer turning to Twitter, looking for a last minute opponent to take their spot. The organizers of the uh, tournament say that they're also helping to look for a replacement opponent. The Arizona Coyotes are postponing their game today. The team was scheduled to play the Vancouver Canucks, but it's been postponed due to a recent rise in COVID cases on the Canucks. The NHL says that game will be moved back after the league's holiday break. A game with serious implications on the football field for our Arizona Cardinals is being postponed. The Cards are just one game ahead of the Rams right now in the NFC West. The Rams game against Seattle now getting pushed back to at least Tuesday because L.A. is dealing with a major COVID outbreak. Nearly half of their active players are on the COVID-19 list. The Rams aren't the only team dealing with this either. Coming up at 6.30 this morning, we're going to take a deeper look at how the league itself is adjusting its protocols as more teams deal with those outbreaks. And our Arizona Cardinals, they're going to be taking the field today, and they have a lot to play for in the Motor City. So they are in Detroit. They're going to be taking on the Lions. The hope here is that they bounce back from that tough week last <laughs> time. Our ABC 15 Sports yeah, Director Craig Fooey shows us today's keys to victory. Time for your keys to victory for week 15 of the NFL season. The Arizona Cardinals at the Detroit Lions. Listen, the Lions are not very good. They're 1 11 and 1 on the season. Your Cardinals 10 and 3. Number one, stop the run. That's the only thing the Lions do that's any good. So stop the run. Number two, play with intensity. Get back to that intensity you've shown on the road so far. You're 7 0 on the road so far. Let's make it 8 0 this Sunday. And number three, minimize turnovers. That's what cost you against the Rams on that Monday night game. Don't throw an interception or fumble the football. You get those three things done and you win at Detroit and go to 11 and three on the season. Those are the numbers we're looking for. So that path to clinching the playoffs, pretty simple for the cards win today. You're in for the first time in six years, even with that loss. There are eight scenarios where they could clinch a playoff spot today. But things are very much still in the air when it comes to positioning. Right now, the Cards are the number three seed in the NFC. To move up, they'd need a win. And for the Packers or Buccaneers to lose, Green Bay is at Baltimore today. Bucks are taking on the Saints at home. So... I don't know. We'll Saints, see. Of course, Saints that matters because it depends on where they play, yeah. too. You know, so, yeah, that's true. You, the Saints are kind of a wild card, so you yes. just don't know how they'll match up with the Bucks. We'll see. If you still need a few more stocking stuffers, there are still some great sales to take advantage of. In fact, our Smart Shopper team is going to list the best toy stores to help you out right now. And it's time for a quick getaway. Our friends from The List, they're giving us a tour of America's best ski towns.
Welcome back everybody. It is officially ski season and there are plenty of options if you're look, looking to hit the slopes. All new this morning, Christina Guerrero from The List. She gives us a look at some of the West's best ski resort towns. Tis the season to plan your best ski trip yet. Getting after it today. And if you're wanting to beat the crowds this year, we've got you covered. Why not go to a small town? I certainly have some favorites that I can share with you. Freelance travel journalist and blogger Jennifer Broom takes us across America to some of the best small town ski destinations where there's plenty to do on and off the slopes. You can get outside and enjoy, kind of slow down. You get that small town life. Our journey begins in Midway, Utah. It is this beautiful valley. It's in Heber Valley. Nearby, you'll find three world-class skiing destinations. Deer Valley, Park City, and Sundance. And it's also a prime spot for some family fun at Ice Castles, a frozen tourist attraction that opens in January. But bookings are open now at icecastles.com. It's a world of ice with slides, ice chairs, tunnels, a great thing for families to do. Let's move on to Telluride, Colorado. It's a very unique place because it's in a box canyon. So it's surrounded by 13,000 and 14,000 foot peaks. It's kind of like skiing in the Alps. You can explore this historic mining town and then take a quick gondola ride to Mountain Village. That's your base camp for adventure to ski or ride. My favorite run in Telluride is one that's called see forever because you can see forever on that ride. You can see all the way to the LaSalle Mountains in Utah. Our next stop takes us to Flagstaff, Arizona. Yes, there is a ski resort in Arizona. It is Snowball, just north of Flagstaff. When you take the lift up at Snowball, you get this incredible view of a mountain landscape with snow. And off the slopes, you can stop by Lowell Observatory to gaze at the stars, or just over an hour away, stop by the Grand Canyon. When you go in the winter, you do not have to contend with crowds at all. It's a perfect time to enjoy that grand landscape of the Grand Canyon. Finally, Ketchum, Idaho. It's home to Sun Valley. Sun Valley Resort has been named North America's number one resort and its primary ski spot, Bald Mountain. You have to ski Baldy. Also, to make the most out of your visit in Ketchum, make sure you go to the Pioneer Saloon. That's a must. That's your peek into the larger than life fun that awaits you at these small town ski destinations across America. And a quick trip to the Rockies just got easier for us here in the Valley. Denver Air Connection is offering daily flights from Sky Harbor Airport to the Telluride Regional Airport. Those flights take just over an hour and will run through April. And if you want to take uh, the short trip up north to Arizona Snow Bowl, it is opening more trails for you. The Aspen Chairlift and a Big Spruce Conveyor, they opened for the season on Saturday. Right now, there are 11 trails and six lifts ready to go. They've got 21 inches of snow at the base, and I think by the end of the week, they're going to get even more snow as we head into Christmas weekend and through Christmas weekend. Today, if you're heading up to the slopes up in Flagstaff, you're going to get those clear bluebird skies. It's going to be a gorgeous afternoon. Here in the valley, if you want to head up a mountain for a hike or go for a run or a bike ride, great day to do so because we're going to be just a little bit warmer. Still very dry, though, so just make sure that you're still hydrating, even though it's still on the cooler side overall because we'll warm into the upper 60s today. That is above the average for this time of year and just a little bit warmer than we were yesterday. Not quite to 70 degrees. Clear skies though, so still chilly mornings happening here. We're down into the 30s in Levine, low 40s in Maricopa, 42 in Gilbert right now. We've dipped to 42 in Scottsdale as well. It's 46 in Fountain Hills now, 41 out in Surprise at this hour. Across the rest of the state, we've got single digits to start the day up in Flagstaff. That's a big shift from this time yesterday. We're in the teens in Winslow, single digits, eight degrees in Window Rock and Heber, 10 degrees in Sholo now. Payson sitting at 34, so is Sedona, 19 degrees in Prescott. Safford, though, a little more mild in the 40s this morning, but we're down to 35 in Gila Bend and 39 in Bullhead City. Futurecast showing us we're going to stay clear statewide for the rest of the afternoon. Tomorrow morning, we'll see a few passing high thin clouds here in the valley and areas like Prescott and Sedona, but really it's when you're heading home 
home from work tomorrow and in those dinner hours that we're really going to see the cloud cover move in, not just here in the valley, but statewide. And those clouds are going to last through Tuesday as well, but we'll warm up slightly more on that in just a moment. But first for today's warm up hour by hour, we'll be in the 40s for a while until about that nine o'clock hour. Then by 10, we'll transition over into the 50s. Our time in the 50s is short lived, though, because by noon we're in the low 60s and climbing from there into the upper 60s. So 69 is that high that we'll see in Mesa and Gilbert, as well as Tempe, Peoria. It'll be 68 in Goodyear and Levine. Maricopa warming to 69 today, 66 in Cave Creek this afternoon. Across the rest of the state, more 60s to our south and off to the west, close to 50 degrees across the central portion of Arizona and north of the rim. We're staying in the mid 40s. Now, if you're going to be in Flagstaff for the rest of the week here, we're going to remain in the 40s as well. Just a slight warm up Monday and Tuesday. You'll reach the 50s, but then those rain chances start moving in on Wednesday and it's going to start as rain and then transition to snow showers by the weekend here in the valley. We're going to climb our temperatures up into the 70s. They will return tomorrow, so that's well above the average for this time of year. We look to stay in the 70s through that winter solstice on Tuesday and through Wednesday, but then those rain chances start moving in Thursday. Best chance is Christmas Eve on Friday, so keep that in mind if you're going to be traveling. It might be a wet ride and our temps drop down into the 60s through Christmas Day, but I think that storm moves out by Christmas, but we'll take a closer look at what it looks like if you are looking for a white Christmas across the state. That's a little bit later, Mark. All right, 518 now on your Sunday morning. The Arizona Coyotes, they're looking for a new home in the Valley. Coming up, how they could become roommates with another sports team right here. Time of year where a lot of us settle in with a nice cup of hot cocoa and our favorite Christmas movie. But just ahead, we're joined by an expert who shows us the important financial lessons we can learn while watching our favorite classics. Thanks for watching ABC 15 Arizona, streaming 24-7 on Roku and these streaming devices. We all have that favorite holiday movie that is a must watch every season, but did you also know that they can give you important financial advice? Stuart Willis is joining us from Asset Preservation Tax and Retirement Services to list the flicks that are the most popular that have fiscal advice for us. Hey, Stuart, good to see you. Yeah, great to see you as well. Thanks for having me. So this is pretty funny. Can we really take away financial lessons from movies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Not only are they there for entertainment, they can actually impart some pretty neat uh, wisdom on you if you uh, listen closely enough. Uh, for example, let's talk about Home Alone. You know, Kevin, when his uh, Christmas is apparently wrecked, you know, his home is invaded by burglars. The one lesson or two lessons I could say we can learn from there is number one is stay positive. You know, a positive mindset can go a long way when it comes to making decisions. And number two, don't panic. There are two emotions that guide people when, when they invest. It's fear and it's greed. And sometimes that fear side just gets way a hold of them and they can't make rational decisions. You know, we've seen some crazy volatility in the markets lately, and we were getting clients that say, oh my gosh, the market's down 2% today. I think it's gonna crash, sell, 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 but then they miss all of the upside. Another movie, Christmas Vacation. Uh, we learned from Clark Griswold and the rest of his family. <laughs> really, don't spend money that you don't have. That's a great one kind of got his foot into it when he when he went in, uh, you know, put that big down payment on the pool, uh, anticipating this massive Christmas bonus. Now, just remember, Christmas bonuses are a bonus. They're not a guarantee. So don't depend on things that you don't already have. You know, we're seeing massive credit, uh, credit card debt now uh, with an average of $2,700 per family. And what that can do is it can make um, the joy of giving that gift, you know, 
overwhelmed by the emotion of knowing you're going into debt. And it does it really make sense to do that. Then there's a real classic, a favorite in this household, how the Grinch stole Christmas. But the lesson there is the holiday spirit, that giving. Holiday spirit is everything, you know. Um, one lesson I can, you know, say to learn from there is to, to maybe reconsider giving individual gifts and maybe think about doing something as a family together. For example, this year, my family and I, we're actually going to Disneyland because, you know, does that $200 pair of shoes that are way too expensive, you know, that the kids are going to like for a month or two, does it really make sense to give up that much for so little? And the last one, A Christmas Carol. What's our lesson on that one? The one lesson we, we can learn is that there's a lot of a lot of benefit from giving, right? From, from not just gathering, but from, from letting go. And, and one thing you can do is just give to charity. If you go to our website at APSITaxes.com, we're actually matching all of our, all of our audience's uh, donations up to $20,000 to the St. Mary's Food Bank. And you know, for every $1 you give, seven families can be fed. So it's really important to donate. What a great way to switch from the bah humbug to happy holidays and Merry Christmas and you make it easy. We appreciate that so much. And these were really fun tips and a new way to look at those movies. Thanks, Stuart. No problem. Thank you so much for having me again and happy holidays to you and your family.